Hello everybody, I am Shama Srikumar, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. Today, I will be giving a lecture on the topic Frequency Hoping Spread Spectrum, FHSS, which is a part of Module 5 in the course EC302 Digital Communication. The topics covered in this lecture will be Frequency Hoping Spread Spectrum and its type which is low frequency hopping and fast frequency hopping. The reference textbook used is Simon Hick. In this module, we have already discussed the concept of spread spectrum communication. In spread spectrum communication, we will be using pseudo noise sequences so as to spread the data across the frequency. Now, Spread spectrum communication is mainly used to reduce the attack of jammers. One type of spread spectrum communication already discussed was direct sequence spread spectrum in which data is directly spread using a spreading code. Now in frequency hoping spread spectrum, we are modulating the data using a carrier and that data will be varied from one frequency to another. Now, when you consider the spectrum of this transmitter signal, it will be spread sequentially. Now, this sequential spreading is done using a pseudo-random sequence. Therefore, it is a type of spread spectrum communication in which a carrier hopes randomly one from one frequency to another. It is called as frequency hoping spread spectrum. So when you consider frequency hoping spread spectrum, it will not cover the entire spectrum at one instant. It will be spread across the spectrum in a sequential manner. And when you consider frequency hoping spread spectrum, the commonly used modulation technique is MRA FSK. That is MRA frequency shift key. And therefore the combination of frequency hoping and MRA FSK is called as FH slash MFSK. So when you consider conventional communication systems, the entire data will be transmitted at a single frequency when time is varied. Now in such cases, there are chances of interference and jamming attack. Since the data is transmitted at the same frequency, there are more chances of getting jamming attack. So we are going for something called as frequency hoping spread spectrum. In that, we are dividing the entire time range into different slots and the data will be transmitted at different frequency in each time slot. Therefore, a hoping pattern will be allotted. So the hoping pattern here it is F1, F5, F3, F6, F0 and F5. So how it does is that it will start with the frequency F1. The next time slot, it will switch this data to frequency F5. In the next slot, it will switch to F3, then to F6, then to F0, then to F5. So in, when you consider this data, it is varying in frequency at each time instant. So it will be more difficult to get attacked by a jammer. Now this pattern which it follows is called as the hoping pattern and the hope time is a time it maintains at a particular frequency range. Now when you consider this hoping pattern it will be known to the sender and receiver. Now when you consider different senders they will be using different hoping patterns and it will be different at different times. So it will be difficult for anyone else to tap the information from the chat. So this is the concept behind frequency hoping spread spectra in which the frequency is hoped at different frequency at different time instant. Now the hoping pattern here it is controlled using our PN sequence. Thus it is called as the frequency hoping spread spectrum. Now when you consider types of frequency hoping there are two types. One is slow frequency hoping and one is fast frequency hoping. It is determined by the rate at which the frequency is hoped at different times. So when you consider slow frequency hoping, the hoping takes place at a slower rate. 
that means in one frequency hope several symbols will be transmitted but when you consider fast frequency hoping it is hoped at a faster rate that means one symbol will be transmitted at different frequency hopes so when you consider slow frequency hoping the symbol rate will be in a integer multiple hope hope rate whereas when you consider fast frequency hoping our hope rate is faster so hope rate will be an integer multiple of the symbol rate rs so we'll be discussing in detail about slow frequency hoping and fast frequency hoping in the coming slides so before we go into slow and fast frequency hoping let us see the block diagram of transmitter and receiver used for frequency hoping with mfsk so when you consider frequency hoping mfsk transmitter first we will be performing mra fsk modulation then we will be performing frequency hoping so it consists of two part the first part is mra fsk modulation and second part is the frequency hope so when you consider the transmitter we are having a binary data and the carrier signal they are applied to an mra fsk modulator fsk means as frequency shift key if it is binary fsk corresponding to 0 it will be transmitted at a particular frequency and corresponding to 1 it will be transmitted at a different frequency but if it's a mrfsk consider m equal to 4 so it will be grouping two symbols each and corresponding to each combination will be having a particular frequency like 00 0, it will be f0 01 it is f1 10 f2 11 is f3 now the output of the mrfsk modulator is applied to a multiplier which is a part of a mixer circuit now the second input to the mixer is the output of a frequency synthesizer this frequency synthesizer is driven using our pn sequence generator we have already seen that the pn sequence is generated using linear feedback shift registers that is if you are having m flip flops it will generate a pn sequence of length 2 raised to m minus 1 now we are taking k bits from our pn sequence now using k bits it can generate 2 raised to k frequency ranges so the frequency range will give a output of 2 raised to k frequency hopes so it will select one frequency and a multiplier output if there are two input frequency the multiplier output will be the sum and the different frequency the aim of the pan pass filter is to remove our difference frequency therefore only the sum frequency is passed through the output thus we will obtain the frequency hoping mfsk signal at the output now this signal will be transmitted through the channel now when you consider the receiver we are performing the reverse operation that is first we will be having the mixer circuit then we will be having the demodulator or detector circuit so this forms the same circuit as in our transmitter there also we are having the received signal which is fed to a multiplier the second out input to the multiplier is the output of a frequency synthesizer this frequency synthesizer is driven using the pn code generator but it is a locally generated pn code at the receiver which will be in synchronization with the transmitted pn sequence now these two are fed to a multiplier the output of the multiplier will be the sum and difference frequency now this sum frequency will be passed through the band pass filter to the output now when you consider the output of the band pass filter this output is processed using non coherent mfsk detection so if you are using coherent mfsk detection we require the knowledge of carrier phase that is it should be in synchronization with the carrier used in the transmitter since it is difficult for us to get the carrier phase information we are going for non coherent mfsk detector they will be using m non coherent match filters where each match filter will be matched to one of the mfsk tone then the largest of the output will be taken and thus we will get our binary data at the output before going into the details of slow frequency hoping 
let's explain slow frequency hopping with the help of an example. We are having an input binary data which consists of zeros and ones and we are using a pseudo noise sequence of length 15 to determine the hopping frequency. Now in MRA FSK we are taking 2 bits per MFSK symbol. So if we are considering 2 bits per MFSK symbol there will be a total of 4 symbols which is 2 raised to k. So the 4 frequencies we are assigning for an FSK signal is F0, F1, F2 and F3. Similarly, we are taking 3 bits of the PN sequence to select the hopping frequency. So using 3 bits, we can select 8 possible frequencies. So those frequencies are assigned as FC0, FC1, etc. up to FC7 and which will be the 3 bit combinations from 000 to 111. So we have already told that the number of bits per MFSK symbol is 2. So we have divided the entire input data into a number of 2 bit sequence. Now since it is low frequency hoping, more than one symbol will be controlled by the same PN sequence or the same hoping frequency. So we are dividing the PN sequence into sets of 3 and this 3 bits is controlling 2 sets of symbols. Similarly, this 3 bits will control 2 sets of bits and so on. So we are taking the axis which is the time axis and y axis is the frequency and we are dividing the frequency axis into 8 and that is FC0, FC1, FC2 etc. up to FC7 and these denotes the 3 bit PN sequence combination from 00 to 111. Corresponding to each frequency we can have 4 possible symbols that is F0, F1, F2, F3 which corresponds to 00, 01, 10 and 11. So we are taking the first set. It corresponds to PN sequence 001. So for that we will be choosing the frequency FC1 and we will divide this FC1 into 4 possible that is F0, F1, F2 and F3. Now it, since it is 01 so we will be choosing F1 here. So in this frequency duration we are choosing F1. The next duration we have got the symbol 1 1. So it will be choosing F3 here. So when you see the frequency here it is FC1 plus F1 and the frequency here is FC1 plus F3. Now when you consider the next set of symbols it is transmitted at a different hopping frequency that is 1 1 0. So we will switch to the frequency FC6 Again, divide it into four frequencies F0, F1, F2, F3. Corresponding to 1, 1, we will be transmitting F3. Corresponding to 1, 0, we will be transmitting F2. So, this corresponds to the frequency FC6 plus F3, and this corresponds to the frequency FC6 plus F2. Next one is 0, 1, 1, which corresponds to FC3. So, we will choose FC3, and the bit is 0, 0. So, it is FC3 plus F0. So FC3 is chosen, FC3 plus F0. So this is corresponding to that symbol. Now next is 1, 0. So it will be transmitting FC3 plus F2. Similarly, when you consider this, it is 0, 0, 1, which corresponds to FC1. 0, 1 corresponds to F1. So it will transmit FC1 plus F1. Next is again FC1 plus it is plus F3. Now last is again FC1 but 1 0 is the symbol being transmitted. 1 0 stands for F2 so it will be transmitting FC1 plus F2 in the last two time slot. So this figure shows slow frequency hoping and the data is being mm -hmm. transmitted at different frequencies at different time instead. So this entire data it is transmitted at different frequencies so it will be difficult for the jammer to get back the information. Now when you observe the figure, one blocks corresponds to transmission of one symbol. So this corresponds to the symbol time Ts which is equal to 1 by Rs. Now during this symbol duration we are transmitting two bits. So the half of this corresponds to Td which is our bit duration 1 by Rb. Now during the duration of two symbols, it is transmitting at the same frequency of FC1. So this is our hope type TH, which is equal to 1 by RG. After this duration, it is hoping to a different frequency. So 
when you observe this, we are having three times Ts, Tb and Th. Now, when you observe the relation between Rs, Rb and Rh, Rs is equal to Rb by K. Here, number of bits per symbol is 2. So, Rs is half the bit rate. Now, when you consider the chip rate, it is equal to the value of maximum of Rh, Rs. Now, when you observe this figure, the hope time is greater than symbol duration. That is, Th is greater than Ts. So, when you consider the reciprocal, Rs will be greater than Rh. Therefore, the chip rate is equal to the symbol rate. So, the spreaded signal in frequency domain, it is transmitted over the channel. Once it is received at the receiver, we need to de-hope or the reverse operation of frequency hoping spread spectrum should be done at the receiver. So, we are having the spreader signal. Now, when you consider received signal, we should be able to decode the data which is being sent. So, first we should be able to extract the frequency information of the MFSK symbols. So, we are considering only one symbol due rate duration that is rs duration here now this will be divided into four frequencies f0 f1 f2 f3 during the first duration it is being sent at frequency fc1 plus f1 so it will extract that information f1 here next is being sent at fc1 plus f3 so it will extract that f3 and remove fc1 now, this is being sent at FC6 plus F3. It will remove FC6 and get that F3 information. Next is at FC6 plus F2. So, it will extract that F2 information. Now, next is being sent at FC3 plus F0. So, it will extract that F0, then F2, then it is F1, then F3, then F2, F2. So, when you decode the data back, if it is F1, it will be 0, 1. For F3, it is 1, 1. F2, it is 1, 0. F0 is 0, 0 and so on. So, when you observe the data, we are recovered back the original input binary data. So, this example gives us the information regarding slow frequency hoping. So, when you consider slow frequency hoping, the individual frequency hoping or MFSK tone of the shortest duration is called as the chip. And the chip rate will be the maximum value of RH and RS, where RH is the hope rate and RS is the symbol rate. Now, when you consider slow frequency hoping, we are having multiple symbols are transmitted per hope. So, each symbol of the slow frequency hoping is considered as a chip. Therefore, the chip rate will be equal to symbol rate, which is equal to bit rate by K. Now, when you observe the value of hope time and the symbol time, TH will be greater than TS. Since TH is equal to 1 by RS and TS is equal to 1 by RS, we will get it as RS greater than RH. So, you can also prove that our chip rate is equal to RS using this equation. And now when you consider the value of k, it will be equal to log m to the base 2, where k is the number of bits in an MFSK symbol. Now when you consider each hope, the MFSK tones, that is F0, F1, F2, F3, are separated by an integer multiple of chip rate. It is to ensure orthogonality. If the symbols are orthogonal to one another, we can avoid the chances of crosstalk or interference. Now, to determine the value of processing gain for a frequency hoping system, the effect of jamming signal on a frequency hoping system is similar to the effect of additive wide Gaussian noise on an FSK system. So, we are assuming that the jammer spreads its power over the entire spectrum and it is equivalent to our additive wide Gaussian noise with power spectral density n0 by 2. So, the power spectral, the value of N0 is given as the ratio of the total power of the jammer, which is considered as J, and it is spread over the entire spectrum of width WC. So, the value of N0 is given by J by WC. Now, when you consider this energy to noise ratio, it is a ratio of E by N0. When you consider energy, it is the product of power and symbol duration same as P by Rs. 
and n naught we have already defined is a ratio of jamming power to the width of the frequency hopping. So it is j by wc. So when you rearrange the term, we'll get it as p by j divided by wc by rs. Now this p by j it is a ratio of signal power to the jammer power. It is the reciprocal of our jamming margin. Now when you consider this denominator term, it is called as our processing gain, which is equal to wc by rs. So when you observe this figure, this one frequency slot is equal to our symbol rate rs. And WC, it is the width of the entire spectrum, starting from FC0 to FC7. In this example, now when you consider WC, the relation between WC and RS, in this case, is WC is equal to 8 into RS. But in general, we can tell it as 2 raised to K into RS, where K is the number of bits of the PN sequence used to select a particular frequency. Therefore, processing gain it is equal to 2 raised to k. Now, when you can convert it into decibels, it is 10 log 2 raised to k, which is equal to 10 into k log 2, which is approximately equal to 3k. Now, this result we have got assuming that the jammer spreads its power over the entire spectrum bandwidth. But if it decides to concentrate only on just a few frequencies, then the processing gain will be less than 3k decibels. Now, the processing gain can also be expressed in terms of the equation. It's a ratio of bandwidth of spreaded signal by bandwidth of unspreaded signal. Now, when you consider the bandwidth of unspreaded signal, we are considering the symbol frequency to be Fs. If the symbol frequency is Fs, the bandwidth of unspreaded signal can be determined using Fs by number of bits per MFSK symbol. In the previous example, number of bits per MFSK symbol was 2. So, the bandwidth of unspreaded signal is Fs by 2. Now, when you consider the spreaded signal, it is spreaded over the entire range. So, it will be multiplying number of MFSK symbols per hope into Fs. That is per hoping frequency, how many MFSK symbols are present into Fs. So, when you take the ratio between the two, we will get processing gain as number of bits per MFSK symbol into number of MFSK symbols per hope. When you consider an example of a slow frequency hoping system with number of bits per MFSK symbol as 4 and number of MFSK symbols per hope is equal to 5. So to calculate the processing gain, we are taking the symbol frequency to be Fs. So the bandwidth of unspreaded signal is equal to Fs by number of bits per MFSK symbol which is 4. And the bandwidth of spreader signal is number of MFSK symbols per hope into Fs, which is equal to 5 Fs. So the processing gain is a ratio between the two, which is equal to 5 Fs by Fs by 4, which is equal to 20. Now when you convert it into decibels, it will be equal to 10 log 20, which is equal to 13 decibels. Now, when you consider fast frequency hoping spread spectrum, we will be having multiple hopes per MRI symbol. That is, when you consider one symbol, it will be transmitted multiple hoping frequency. So, here each hope will be considered as a chip and this system will be more resistant to jamming attack. It is because the frequency will be changing much faster when you compare it with slow frequency hoping. So it will be more difficult for the jammer to measure the power and to introduce an attack onto the data. And when you consider the receiver, we will be again using non-coherent detection at the receiver. Similarly, we can consider an example for fast frequency hoping. Here also we are given an input binary data which consists of zeros and ones and we are using a 15-bit PN sequence. And again, we are choosing number of bits per MFSK symbol as 2 and length of PN sequence per hope is equal to 3. Again, in similar manner, that all remains the same. That is corresponding to MFSK, we are having the frequency F0, F1, F2, F3 and corresponding to the hopes, we are having the frequency FC0, FC1, etc, FC7. Now, in similar manner, we are dividing the input code into a number of 2-bit sequences since we are considering an MFSK symbol which is having 2 bits per symbol. Now, when you consider fast frequency hoping, within each symbol, we are having number of hoping frequency. So, here we are having 2 hoping frequency. 
that is each hopping frequency is controlled by a 3 bit pn sequence but when in the given question there are only 15 bits for the pn sequence so from the property of pn sequence of maximum length sequence it will repeat itself after 2 raised to m minus 1 clock set so after 15 bits we are taking the same set of 15 bits in the next duration again 15 bits and so on so when you consider this again we are dividing into frequency axis fc0 to fc7 now when you consider the first duration it is 001 so it will choose the frequency fc1 it will divide into f0 f1 f2 f3 now this is 01 so it will choose the frequency f1 here so it will transmit the frequency fc1 plus f1 now before the time period of that symbol is completed it will switch to a different frequency which is controlled by 110 which is fc6 so next duration will select fc6 and it will transmit fc6 plus f1 so the same symbol is transmitted using different frequency now in the next case it is 011 so it will be choosing fc3 it is divided to f0 f1 f2 f3 and it will choose fc3 plus f3 the next slot it will be shifted to a different frequency which is controlled by 001 which is fc1 so it will transmit fc1 plus f3 so again during the duration of 11 one, one, we are having two hoping frequency fc3 and fc1 similarly we can repeat this process for 001 it will be choosing fc1 it will be transmitted fc1 plus f3 next is again fc1 plus f3 Next it is 110, so it is FC6 plus F2. Next is 011, so it is FC3 plus F2. Next is 001, so it will be choosing FC1 plus F0. Next is 001 again, so it is FC1 plus F0. For 001, it is FC1 again, so it is FC1 plus F2. For 110, it will choose FC6, so it is FC6 plus F2. For 011, it will choose FC3, so it is FC3 plus F1. Next is 001, so it is FC1 plus F1. Again 001, so it is FC1 plus F3. Now it is 110, so it is FC6 plus F2. For 011, it will be choosing FC3, so it is FC3 plus F2. For 001, it will be choosing FC1, so it is FC1 plus F2. So in the similar manner, we have plotted the fast frequency hoping spread the spectrum variation with time. So when you observe, each symbol is transmitted at multiple hoping frequency. So it will be difficult for the jammer to track the data which is being sent using this fast frequency hoping technique. So when you consider the hoping time and the symbol duration, here the symbol duration is two time splits and the hoping time is a single value. So the hoping time will be having a lesser value when we compare it with the symbol duration for fast frequency hoping. So that is why we are telling like our RH will be an integer multiple of RS in the case of fast frequency hoping. So in a similar manner we need to de-hope and get back the information that is being transmitted. So, during the first duration, it is being sent at FC1 plus F1. So, it will recover back the information F1. Again, in the next duration also, we will be getting F1. Now, next it is FC3 plus F3. So, we will get back F3. Then next it is FC1 plus F3. So, it will get it as F3. Then again, we are having FC1 plus F3. Again, it is F3. Now next it is FC6 plus F2, so we will get back F2. Next duration also it will be F2. Next it is FC1 plus F0, so we will recover back F0. After that it is FC1 plus F2, so we will get back the information F2. Then it is FC3 plus F1, so we will get back F1 for the next two duration. Next it is FC1 plus F3, so we will get back F3. Next it is FC6 plus F2, so we will get back F2 during next two duration and next it is FC1 plus F2, so we will again get F2. So using these we will get back our MFSK symbols which are being transmitted which is same as the input binary data. The processing gain in fast hoping spread spectrum can also be expressed in terms of equation bandwidth 
the spreaded signal by bandwidth of unspreaded signal. So we are considering the symbol frequency to be FS. In similar to slow frequency hoping, the bandwidth of unspreaded signal is FS by number of bits per MFSK symbol. Now when you consider the spreaded signal, we will be considering FS into number of hopes per MFSK symbol. That is one symbol will be sent in multiple hopes. So we are multiplying FS with number of hopes per MFSK symbol. Therefore the processing gain is the ratio between the two. So you will get it as number of bits per MFSK symbol into number of hopes per MFSK symbol. So when you consider a example for a fast hoping system with number of bits per MFSK symbol as 4 and for each symbol we are having 4 hopes. So when you find the processing gain we are considering frequency FS and the bandwidth of unspreaded signal is FS by 4. Now when you consider the spreader signal the bandwidth is 4 into FS. So when you find the processing gain it is 4 FS by FS by 4 which is equal to 16. Therefore, the processing gain in decibel is 10 log 16 which is equal to 12.04 decibel. So now we have studied about slow frequency hoping spread spectrum and fast frequency hoping spread spectrum. Now let's compare and differentiate between slow frequency hoping and fast frequency hoping. So the main difference is that in slow frequency hoping within one frequency hope we are transmitting multiple symbols. But when you consider fast frequency hoping, multiple hopes are taken to transmit a single symbol. Now the second point is that when you consider chip rate and symbol rate, here the symbol rate will be equal to chip rate in the case of slow frequency hoping. But in fast frequency hoping, the hope rate is equal to chip rate. That is the smallest duration that is possible. It is of hope rate in fast frequency hoping and it is symbol rate in slow frequency hoping. So when you compare hope rate with symbol rate, our hope rate will be less than symbol rate in slow frequency hoping but hope rate is greater than symbol rate in fast frequency hoping. It is because the hope time is less than symbol duration in fast frequency hoping and the hope time is greater than symbol duration in slow frequency hoping. So when you consider a carrier frequency that is FC0, FC1 etc. When you consider a particular carrier frequency one or more symbols will be transmitted at the same carrier frequency. Now when you consider fast frequency hoping one symbol is transmitted over multiple carriers that is different FC will be chosen for transmitting a single symbol. Now when you consider slow frequency hoping the signal can be detected by a jammer if carrier frequency in one hope is known. That is we are transmitting multiple symbols using the same carrier frequency. So if the jammer gets the information then they will be able to understand the data being transmitted. But in the case of fast frequency hoping one symbol is being transmitted using multiple frequency. So it will be difficult for the jammer to detect the signal being transmitted. So these are the main differences between slow frequency hoping and fast frequency hoping. So in this module we have studied about different spread spectrum technique. One is a direct sequence spread spectrum and one is frequency hoping spread spectrum. So we will conclude this module by differentiating between direct sequence and frequency hoping spread spectrum. So when you consider direct sequence spread spectrum we are having a PN sequence which will be multiplied with the input data so as to spread the data across a large bandwidth. When you consider frequency hoping spread spectrum, the data will be transmitted in multiple frequency slots which are controlled by a PN sequence. Now the second difference is that the, when you consider direct sequence spread spectrum, the data is spread over the entire bandwidth of the spread spectrum signal. That is when you consider the original data and the spreader data, the spreader data will be an, uh, spread across the entire bandwidth. When you consider frequency hoping spread spectrum, it will be spread over a particular frequency slot depending upon the PN sequence. It is not necessary that it will take the entire frequency spectrum in FHSS. Now when you consider DSSS, the chip rate is fixed. It's always the reciprocal of a chip duration. So RC is equal to 1 by TC. 
but when you consider frequency hoping spread spectrum it will be the maximum value of rh and rs and it will be equal to rs in the case of slow frequency hoping and it will be equal to rh in the case of fast frequency hoping now when you consider the modulation technique used in direct sequence spread spectrum it will be binary phase shift key whereas the fhss uses mra fsk modulation now when you consider the processing gain it is equal to tb by tc that is bit duration by chip duration in direct sequence spread spectrum and it is equal to 2 raised to k in the case of frequency hopping spread spectrum where k denotes the length of the pn sequence chosen to select a particular frequency so in this module we have learned that spread spectrum techniques its generation how pn sequence are generated then direct sequence spread spectrum its transmitter receiver processing gain similarly frequency hopping spread spectrum and different types of frequency hopping spread spectrum thank you